yourself uh, and, and will be devoted to some uh, dynamic neural problem for dissipative systems. Um, okay. So uh, in this talk, we consider the dynamic problem for uh, the pair of uh, one-dimensional dynamical system of first order of this type. One can think about this systems as a first order, first order hyperbolic system or transport equation. I will comment uh, more on physical uh, nature and some applications in the end of my talk. And also we consider the pair of the systems. You see uh, the one in uh, the one uh, with uh, which is marked by plus or some sm smooth functions which form the matrix potential. And the, the second system with uh, which is marked by minus sign, which differs from the first one by changing the signs here and here. Actually, one can think about considering some system in positive and for positive and negative times. Just, uh, but for us, it would be easier to consider the system in just positive time, but change, but with the change of the sign. The first system is controlled in the first channel, so it's uh, it's one dimensional in, uh, but matrix system. Its first system is uh, has a boundary control in the first channel. The second system is controlled in the second channel, and. Um, uh, the solution of this uh, system are called uh, u plus and u minus, and uh, we know uh, that uh, when uh, the con boundary control is regular and uh, additional information on zero at uh, at time t equal to zero, then the solution of this problem is classical. When uh, control is from L2, then uh, the solution is generalized and it just belongs to this problem. So at some fixed time, time t, this is function from L2. And actually, the system in both of these systems, we have a final speed of wave, wave propagation. Um, the formulas will be later. And to this, uh, with these two systems, we associate the response operators, R plus and R minus, which is uh, we, for the first system, we control, we have a boundary control at the first channel. So we measure the second channel uh, response. And uh, for the system with minus, we have control in the second channel. So we measure the, information of the response in the first chain. And our aim will be to uh, reconstruct the unknown pot matrix potential or which is equivalent to functions P and Q from these two observations. Okay, in the end of the talk, I, I'll talk more about the <laughs> why we are interested in this problem and uh, a lot of things but uh, actually such kind of problems were considered in a series of papers by Yamamoto and his co-authors uh, Trushin, Ning, uh, it's maybe I don't know six seven maybe more papers in um, 10s starting from 2002 and 2008. They deal with uh, such kind of problems but uh, they use the uh, spectral method. The formulation was maybe slightly different. They consider it, uh, um, sometimes they consider it uh, first order hyperbolic system, sometimes they consider it wave equation, but uh, everything was uh, common. They need the observation for positive and negative times, as I said before. So we also can think of this just is one system with observation of positive and negative times, but we just reverse the time in, in, the, in the second system. 
Yeah, so this system is uh, something uh, like which we consider it in this series of papers, but we use uh, different techniques. They use a spectral technique, which is they need to prove a lot of things about the risk base of eigen, eigen vectors and so on. We they were also con considered this on interval. So we consider it on half line and we don't need this uh, quite uh, um, in quite, I mean, I mean information which is hard to prove. I mean, some reason, so we don't need this. So we use purely dynamic methods. Okay, let us just, I first describe the, what's going on here. Here I just marked the relationship as I said, so the second system is something like the first one with the inversion of time. So we have the observation of some symmetry of the system is described by this line. One can um, show that uh, using the geometric optics that uh, the solution of these systems, they have this form. And this form also is important. I, in the end of talk, I, I will make some comments about what we can expect and why why do we need two systems, not one, and so on. But this formula is important for us. You see, when we for the first system, we the main term is uh, this one, and in the first channel, in the second channel is zero, and additionally we have an integral term. For the second system, we have a similar situation. And uh, so we define the response function as a observation in the second channel for the first system, and the first channel in this system. So they uh, have a form of convolution uh, given by two functions, sub plus and a minus. Okay, so. Uh, well, to apply the, we use a boundary control method in some, we have some additional constructions here, of course, but we use it in um, mm -hmm. non self adjoint version of this method. So we construct uh, two more uh, system, which marked by also plus and minus and the difference in science here. They are actually adjoined to the initial our initial systems, and for these two systems, we also introduce the response operators by the same nature. And uh, it's important uh, that uh, the responses for the auxiliary systems six and seven are related to the responses of the initial systems by a very simple formula, the complex conjugate. Okay, so we construct then the control operator for the first pair of, pair of systems just by this formula. It's sum of two functions. So we have solution of the system one and system two, we just we fix these two solutions at the point T and we just uh, add them to each other. And the result is a uh, uh, control operator which acts on pair of functions. So it takes the pair of functions F and G, two controls for system one and two and get mapped into the sum of the solutions of the system one and two. And for the second pair, we have also the um, for the second pair, we also have the uh, control operator with a DS sign, which is defined in a very similar way. Uh, the important thing is that uh, such a defined operators, WT, WT, DS, are isomorphism between F and H. We also can observe some relation between these functions, some which which actually implies these relations on um, responses. 
Okay. And uh, then we construct the connecting operator, which is widely used in the boundary control theory, not only in boundary control theory, it's in Sorry, uh, it exists multi in such a way. It's just product of this WT and WT DS. Uh, so it's given by this formula. And what's important for us is that it's uh, expressed in terms of inverse data, which is operator, operators R plus uh, for the first system and R minus, so related to the second system. So it's given by this. Uh, so it's operator in mat matrix form where operator C is just extension of function by zero. Uh, the star is conjugate and uh, operator P to T is, is operator of uh, inverting the time. Okay, so, so this operator is given in terms of inverse data, which is uh, two responses, uh, plus and minus. So also possible to write it down in terms of uh, as an integral kernel. So then it has uh, uh, this form where the matrix C and uh, matrix C, uh, entries of the matrix C are given by this uh, formulas. I just want to make pay your attention then on diagonal we have um, something which depends on time t and on anti-diagonal we have uh, some expression some which depends on time 2t. That's also important. Okay, then we can uh, derive the crane equations, which is uh, in a dynamic settings. It's um, one should look for a control that uh, generates certain function. This certain function uh, has this form. So if we set up the Cauchy problem of this form with some alpha and beta, and uh, we look for the solution. To this equation, I mean, not not look. I mean, we know that this solution exists because this operator WT is uh, isomorphism. But what is important that this control can be found from the Crane equation, from the Crane equation, which looks oh, from the equation of boundary control method, uh, which looks like this which looks like this. Alpha and beta, we can choose uh, whatever we want, but but of course not uh, <laughs> simultaneously zero. Okay, and um, uh, after that, uh, after that, we can, um, we can recover actually the unknown potential. We can recover unknown potential using the amplitude uh, formula. So we have uh, a representation for our opera operator WT, which is just some of these two some of these two things, and uh, on, on, on the main term will be just some exponent uh, here and this exponent, some exponential, and it immediately yields uh, this formula on the on the function of this, and uh, using the equation, we can recover the potential by this formula. Where PT is recovered from from just this uh, uh, functions, and uh, after that, we can recover Q. Also, that everything is, no, is known in this equation. So that's pretty much all about the recovering of the potential. 
So we use kind of um, more or less standard technique. Uh, I, I will also make some <laughs> remarks what, what part is standard, what is not standard. Okay, and uh, we also can formulate, we didn't prove it yet, and we don't even know whether we do it or not, but, well, the question on the characterization of inverse data, so it's kind of important issue, of course, and um, this boundary control method offers some um, some useful technique how to, how to prove it. In self-adjoint uh, cases, uh, it was done, for example, in these papers, and in non-self-adjoint situation, it's done in this paper, for example, and we are here in non-self-adjoint situation, and uh, it's something between uh, this and uh, this, some non-self-adjoint situation, but with additional constructions. But then we can formulate the theorem, which is, well, we believe in that uh, these this two functions, uh, response function of the systems, if and only if the operator CT constructed by, uh, constructed by this formula, constructed by the formula, is uh, isomorphism in LL2, in, in corresponding spaces. Okay, and uh, well, so so it's very expected result. Um, why we are not fully satisfied with this result? <laughs> That's maybe the most important issue. We actually st started to deal with this problem because uh, because well because we actually were interested in uh, in the in the inverse dynamic problem for the wave equation with dumping term. So it's a wave equation with dumping term, uh, sigma is a dissipation, parameter of dissipation. We have a control, at, control directly control at zero by F. And uh, well, and the question is to recover parameter sigma from, from the dynamic directly to Neumann map. I mean, for for potential, for velocity, this method works well, but somehow <laughs> nothing can be done with this uh, problem of sigma. And the problem of sigma is a particular example of this uh, sigma with a special choice of parameter P and Q. So in particular, this parameter. And... Uh, uh, for, 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 for some for some time we erroneously think that we can solve this problem observing to only for positive times but uh, actually we found a mistake and it happens that we can recover the sigma having an observation for negative time as well which is which makes uh, situation not physically interesting because sigma makes sense only it's, it's a parameter of dissipation and the physical model is positive and it has a it doesn't have a meaning for negative time observation okay and uh, well what to do here well in a paper by Belishev it was constructed the conservative model of the system where it's shown that this operator uh, the this operator of difference, differentiation is non-local operator, so we need to construct something like recover as a non-local operator. There are some papers which deal with non-local non operators, but of more of more simple way, like convolution. So it's maybe possible to do something by using some similar method, but well, it seems it seems that it's a bit complicated. Well, it's the first thing. The second thing is one-dimensional transport system. So it's uh, it's general uh, 3D transport system. S1 is uh, here. It's it's in 3D equation in 3D equation system where S1 is a sphere. And um, in one-dimensional situation, it's uh, 
S is just plus one and minus minus one. Function phi is some velocity and rho is the density of particles at the point x uh, in the direction s. Some parameters uh, alpha and h has some precise physical meaning, some length of free path of particle, and some h has some um, prob probabilistic nature. It's, uh, um, probability of re reflection and uh, fission of uh, particle into a number of particles and so on. And we also can uh, um, actually rewrite this to, in one, dim one dimensional case, we can also rewrite this to this uh, transport uh, equation in this, two C in this system where this parameter has a precise physical meaning. Uh, but also for the negative observation seem to be means nothing for this uh, situation because uh, this, this problem uh, parameters has a physical meaning and inversing the time, which makes the, I don't know, so this negative signs and the, the not much physical meaning for the system. Um, so actually, but okay, but we obtain some result of the system with uh, and even like necessary and sufficient conditions. So it, <laughs> loosely speaking, it means that this type of uh, setting where we control the first channel and measure something in the second channel, so it's uh, dynamic uh, directly to Neumann data, data. So this type of reverse problem is not relevant to at least to all of the systems. I mean, so you necessarily, yeah, I mean, the, to, to, to find this, you need, you, need, you need, I mean, two observations. So it's uh, make the system, I mean, I, it, it means this problem sort of, I mean, mathematically it's correct, but from physical point, mathematically it's correct. It's nothing, we, we just, get some data, we found uh, what we want, we found some necessary and sufficient condition, but from point of physical point of view, it's, it's well, it uh, should be something maybe different. And Okay, and what, uh, <laughs> what, what I mean by different? Okay, and what, what, what can one expect considering just one system, just system with plus, which is I own it plus here, I just write down the system solely. Okay, so we have this uh, dynamical system with a control. Uh, I just repeat here the system one with a boundary control with a response of this type. So what we get, we get one uh, response function, one response function, and we want to recover the pair of functions, which is, well, which is, you see, it's it's not, I mean, again, it's not a theorem, but <laughs> but it's kind of very un unlikely it's possible to do, you just recover two functions from one function. The second, second, second thing is the controllability of this operator. And the controllability, it has a, uh, I just remind the formula for the, formula for the, solution of the system. So the control operator, which maps the control to the state of the system has this form when we fix T here. And it's clear from this formula that the system is not boundary controllable. And from the point of view of uh, boundary control method and control theory, it's, it's it very unlikely can be identifiable. So it's sort of the Kalman principle. The more system controllable, the more it's identifiable. So this system is not controllable from the boundary. So it's, well, again, it's not theory. The third observation is uh, if we introduce the control operator, which is done by, um, by the similar methods as I shown before the control the this connecting operator for just this one problem 
it would depend on only on the response on the interval zero t not on interval zero two t so it's some object which does not has an information on the potential at some point i mean so, so it's also it's a wrong object so it's wrong object so all the three observations show that it's very unlikely that we can recover the whole information of uh, on, on this matrix from the observation for positive times only well what what we can do next um to just improve the situation from the physical point of view to make to make this uh, physically consistent uh, the first thing is that we can consider the dynamic problem with observation on, on interval not on half-life interval we can add the observation on the right end i don't know on first and second channel we can consider also the um, dynamic scattering problem so we can uh, measure the um i, I mean uh, i guess sort of scattering dynamic scattering data by passing through the passing through the um, potential and reflecting from the potential and uh, the first possibility first two possibilities and the second we can uh, well try to recover what we can so maybe for some uh, special matrices it can be done i mean it cannot be done for the matrices that corresponds to sigma we also have already found but actually yesterday we have a discussion with my co-author and we think that for the special and physically meaningful potential matrix we still can recover which of course contains not two independent parameters by but one we can recover but we just uh, discussed it only yesterday and of course we are not ready to <laughs> provide some information now but uh, that's the current state of the problem so in a nutshell so the we can we mathematically solve the problem but we are not satisfied with the physical meaning of this problem and to deal with some more physically motivated for us problem we either need to change the the problem itself passing to some sort of scattering or to restrict ourselves with a kind of very special um, some special form of and physically motivated form of matrix potentials which we now quite understand okay so i think uh, that's all i'd like to tell you tell you so please if anybody has questions please don't hesitate to ask may i provide a comment yes please. Uh, a comment a, a comment uh, is the following uh, in its uh, most natural, relevant, f physically reasonable statement, the problem of the, even one-dimensional inverse problem of determination uh, for of determination of dissipation is not uh, solved properly. Is not yet solved properly about uh, 30 years were spent to find uh, a version of kilfant levitan approach linear uh, approach what is the main advantage of the kilfant levitan crane approach uh, the original inverse problem is uh, non-linear but uh, it is solved by linear uh, family of linear equations Gilfant Levitan crane equations. And to do something like this, to invent something, to repeat something like this for the problem with dissipation, we were not able to do it uh, during 30 years. And the moral is that this uh, very challenging, challenging problem 
is yet uh, is yet open and we nevertheless we hope uh, to deal with it in future <laughs> that's that's all yes thank you it, yes Mikhail Gerich means this particularly this problem that was we that what we started with then we passed to yes, yes, yes. some uh, transport equation and so on and so forth and yes each time we can do something but uh, not not what we actually wanted <laughs> that's that's a right that's, right that's, okay yes thank you <laughs> thank you if no if no questions then i think uh,